you clicked on this video, so I'm guessing you have an interest in ancient history. You probably want to know more about ancient structures and ancient inventions and theories surrounding the ancient world, new archaeological discoveries, or maybe even human evolution. And if that's the case, then I suggest you stick around. And if you do like my work, you might consider becoming a Patreon or a channel member. A little over a decade ago, ancient stone tools dating to approximately at least 130,000 years ago were discovered on the island of Crete in Greece. Although many archaeologists were kind of skeptical of the age and the possibility that ancient people that long ago traveled overseas to the island of Crete 130,000 years ago. But as time goes on and more evidence gets uncovered, supporting this early age of seafaring people, I feel like it's time to look into it. But before we go into it, I would like to quickly mention that this video is kindly sponsored by Masterworks. And as always, more on that later in the video. As most of my viewers will know, my name is Kaylee, and in this video, I'm actually going to look into the possibility of the first people traveling on vast distances of sea happening some 130,000 years ago. So first, let's start at the location of the discovery, which is Crete. And Crete is an island belonging to the country of Greece, and it's located in the Mediterranean Sea. The original discovery of the stone tools happened all the way back in 2010, and the team that made the discovery and dated these tools to at least 130,000 years ago made the assumption that, as you can imagine, early man had to have traveled overseas to the island of Crete around that point in time. Of course, as you can imagine, it is unclear, and there is doubt, if the tool makers were Neanderthals or Homo sapiens. Both of these species lived at that time, and we know that Neanderthals were in Europe at that time. We don't know that about Homo sapiens. So, I mean, the reason we don't necessarily know is because we haven't found any hominin fossils near the tools, so we cannot therefore be sure who created them. But of course, as you can imagine, evidence leans more towards Neanderthals being the creators and users of these tools, mostly because we know they already inhabited Europe at that point in time. We're not sure about Homo sapiens being there already. As I spoke about in my Stone Tools Predate All Humans video, you can see the thumbnail for that right here on screen, the stone tools that were discovered on Crete could belong to the Acheulean tools industry or the Mousterian tool industry. As the Acheulean tool style industry sprung to life some 1.76 million years ago and lasted to no later than 130,000 years ago, and the Mousterian stone tool industry sprung to life in Europe approximately 160,000 years ago until approximately 40,000 years ago. The Mousterian tool industry is mostly accredited to the Neanderthals. So many people would actually walk past these types of stone tools if they would encounter them in real life, not noticing that they have been created by the hands of people, humans, Neanderthals and you know, other human species they all had their hands in the creation of these tools. So I personally see stone tools as an art form, mostly because of the fact that they're created with you know, a purpose, but they still look incredibly intricate. I often find myself going down a rabbit hole of napping videos online, seeing such tools being created. Right before your eyes is really, really something else. So I see stone tools sort of giving way to kind of the golden age for ancient human species. And as we know, it eventually led to the evolution of our own species, Homo sapiens. Now, speaking of a golden age, my country, the Netherlands, has quite the incredible golden age as well. Not sure if you know about that, but in terms of development, but also, you know, art and painters. And one such painter from the golden age was Rembrandt von Rijn. So he was extremely talented and Rembrandt is considered one of the most important painters of all time due to his color composition and drawing skills. Wedding portraits of Martin Solmans and Opien Kopit, which Rembrandt painted in 1634, 
sold for $182 million. It doesn't take genius to realize that kind of appreciation is very hard to find. And it's why these paintings cost millions in the first place. Low supply, high demand. So the question that arises is how someone makes the demand work for them without being an art expert or, you know, billionaire. So Masterworks has the answer. A platform that gives everyday people the chance to invest in fine art. They let you invest in art without needing $35 million or even $5 million. It's all at a price that works for you. They offer the kind of art that actually performs better when inflation is high, with price appreciation over 36%. That's better than the S&P, real estate, and even gold. Getting started with Masterworks only takes a few clicks. Just log on to masterworks.io using the link in my description, make a free account, and you can start investing in multi-million dollar paintings. And now my viewers actually get priority access to skip their waitlist by clicking the link in the description down below. But enough about art. Let's get back to the stone tools that were discovered on Crete that date to approximately 130,000 years ago and is quite clear evidence that ancient humans traveled over sea to the island at least some 120,000 years earlier than we previously thought. So like I said, it is unclear if the tools necessarily are Acheulean or Musterian and it depends on the location, more on that later. And they were most likely, but it's uncertain, created by Neanderthals. So I mentioned that the tools were discovered on the island of Crete. And before anyone in the comments wants to type about how it could have been attached to land at that point in time, I would like to mention that Crete has actually been an island for at least some 5 million years now. We know from the Trachylos footprints that were discovered on the island of Crete Dating to 6 million years ago, the island back then, 6 million years ago, was still attached to the landmass of mainland Greece. And that made it possible for the hominins that created those prints to even get there. Most likely Ororan Tugenensis, but mm, that is speculation. But somewhere between 6 million years ago and 5 million years ago, the sea level in the Mediterranean rose and therefore Crete became an island. And by the time of some approximately 130,000 years ago, the distance between the shores of the mainland of Greece and the mainland of Turkey and the island of Crete was actually quite vast. You can see the distance between Crete and the other surrounding islands and Greece and Turkey right here. It really is quite the voyage if I'm going to be completely honest with you. Especially 130,000 years ago, you don't have the perfect equipment like we do today. The Mediterranean Sea is already quite tricky to sail, especially back in ancient times with, like I said, the equipment that was available to the Neanderthals. I think they should probably be very happy that they reached land. So the first stone tools that were discovered on the island of Crete were found near the village of Plakias, which is located in the southern part of the island near the coast. The archaeologists discovered hundreds, hundreds of stone tools. Among these were scrapers, picks, cleavers, bifaces, and they mostly resemble the Acheulean tools that were created more than one million years ago for the first time by Homo erectus and were used by the Neanderthals as well. The soil surrounding the tools was dated by the use of varying techniques, not just one technique, but a variety of techniques, although a more exact date than at least 130,000 years ago could not be measured. This has to do with the fact that stratigraphy at the site was unclear and therefore it's unclear if the tools were equally as old as the soil that they were embedded in and this, as you can imagine, raised skepticism by other archaeologists. So due to this skepticism, the archaeologists and the researchers wanted to see if they could find more of these sites in the region. If this discovery near Plakias was just an outlier or if it was one of many locations, you know? 
Well, apparently the surprise discovery near Plakias actually wasn't an outlier at all. As the research in the region has shown more similar sites existing with possible Neanderthal stone tools. Approximately 250 kilometers north of Crete is the island of Naxos in the Aegean Sea. And on the island of Naxos, the researchers discovered a site known as Telida, where they discovered stone tools. Hundreds of stone tools were discovered here, embedded in the soil of a quarry. These tools did not resemble the same style of industry as the tools found at Plakias on Crete, and they were found to not be Acheulean. So these tools were a bit more sophisticated and therefore they actually belong to the Mousterian stone tool industry style. The Mousterian tools are created by a more sophisticated flaking method than the Acheulean type tools. This includes first preparing the stone core before striking off any of the flakes. So it seems like the stone tools that were found at Naxos were discovered in a well-stratified location which means that they should be able to date those tools and the soil around it more accurately. Although the dating of Naxos is still ongoing and researchers have declined to comment further on it for now, which I think is smart. But the Plakia site on Crete and the Stelida site on Naxos weren't the only places on Greek islands where these stone tools were discovered. So stone tools dating to the Paleolithic have been discovered on the islands of Zakynthos and Kefalonia in the Ionian Sea as well. And as you can see on screen here, that's actually quite far away from Crete and Naxos. Although to be fair, it is closer to mainland Greece. So now that we know that the stone tools were discovered on multiple islands surrounding the mainland of Greece, in the Ionian Sea, in the Aegean Sea, and in the Mediterranean Sea, we can, for sure, without a doubt, accept the idea of purposeful settlement. Which means that these ancient humans, most likely Neanderthals, purposefully voyaged overseas to these islands. So for quite a long time, Many archaeologists and historians were open to the idea that humans traveled overseas much earlier than previously thought. And previously they thought it would not be earlier than about 10,000 BCE. Which is weird because not only do we know that this happened in Asia, with ancient humans settling on the Indonesian islands and reaching Australia some 65,000 years ago, although most archaeologists would say that those were luck encounters with land, after drifting off out to sea, I personally don't believe that, but to each their own. I think that those were purposeful voyages as well. But even then, we now seem to have clear evidence of travel overseas that happened at least 130,000 years ago, possibly even earlier than that, which opens up a whole new debate on early settlements in remote places, on islands, and in certain hard to reach locations. And again, as we have seen happen quite a few times now, this is only the beginning of a discovery that could eventually be groundbreaking and change our entire perception of history. And, you know, as always, I'm absolutely here for it. I'm ready to uncover more. I'm ready to learn more. I'm ready for us making these groundbreaking discoveries. But before I end the video, I would like to remind you of the Masterworks link in the description down below. Click on it, create your account and start investing. But with that said, you've reached the end of this video. So give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos. Click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click one of the links in the description down below or click a video in the end card. And I would like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. I'm eternally grateful for all your support of me and my work and this channel and how my passion project became my entire life. Thank you. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. I still have a little bit of an echo. My rug still did not arrive. I'm trying my best, but like I have to make do with what I got. I got a blanket and it's not helping. My apologies.
but I'll probably get like a hundred comments again saying, oh, you have a little bit of an echo. I can't be perfect, guys. I'm trying, but I will never be perfect. I will always make mistakes, except and move on. See you in the next one. Bye.